1971, Marvin Gaye released What's Going On, a now celebrated and heralded piece of soul music that directly addresses issues like race, war, poverty and religion. It's pristinely produced, immaculately arranged and brilliantly performed. In what may be the funniest joke one musician played on another, there was another piece of soul music released that year, with a title aimed squarely at gay. You see, when asked what's going on, Sly Stone replied saying, Marvin, there's a riot going on. Well, Riot is technically credited to Sly and the Family Stone, it's probably better to think of it as a Sly Stone project. The album eschewed the traditional band recording approach in lieu of overdubs. Stone reportedly recorded a lot of the vocals from the comfort of his bed in private locked away recording spaces. The songs are rough, hazy and distorted owing to the unique recording practices and probably also cocaine and PCP both of which were used heavily and frequently during the recording process, not only by Stone but by his collaborators. The record seems almost anti-funk, with slower rhythms, darker themes and rambling incoherences. At this point, Stone was living more or less like a hermit, locked away up in his mansion surrounded by men with guns. He'd invite musicians over to record a part and if he liked them, he would invite them to stay a little longer to partake in drugs and partying. Almost all the parts were overdubs, everything sequestered to its own little space. And at the end, Stone would unite all of it in this murky mess that is now known as there's a riot going on. The Marvin Gaye connection is almost too good to be true. When contrasted, the albums form two polar opposites of the same genre, where Gaye's is a flowing musical musing on togetherness and love, Stone gives us a dark meditation on drugs, dysfunctional families and a few other things that are difficult to suss out because the lyrics are barely audible. Gay had important things to say. Stone seemingly did too, but in the end the words seemed to get lost in the haze. By all accounts, Sly Stone in the 1970s was a dysfunctional person, an addict in every sense of the word. He was a genius, however. His band would contribute immeasurably to the world of funk and soul. The group basically invented disco before disco was even a thing. This album specifically though, is one of the first to feature drum machines. The stiff electronics steal the show on Family Affair, a big hit from the album. It's one of the more coherent songs in the album. The structure is straightforward, the groove is discernible and the words are intelligible. The song is a lamentation on family drama, describing two siblings at odds. One child grows up to be somebody that just loves to learn. And another child grows up to be somebody you just love to burn. It's almost unbelievable how well the song was received. Sly's voice is pressed right up against your ear, the gravel of it present throughout the whole song. The drums are muffled, the bass distorted and the female vocals sound distant. The whole thing also sounds muddy as fuck. Altogether it sounds like a demo tape recorded in a basement in some suburban town. And yet it somehow ended up on KFC commercials. Of course the commercials chop out the parts about family drama and just leave in the chorus. The part that probably hooked most people. The song is followed by the brilliantly titled Africa Talks To You, The Asphalt Jungle, an 8 minute funk opus with skittering bass lines, scanty clavinet vamps and group vocals. The album seems to alternate at various intervals between more direct songs and these odd extended jams. You Caught Me Smiling is one of the more direct songs and seems almost too sincere and sweet to exist on an album as dark as this. The horns sweep in and out like car horns streaming by. Much the same can be said for track 2, Just Like a Baby, with its overdub vocals and slow psychedelic rhythm. The placement seems deliberate though, after the shock of an intro that is love and hate, it sort of reels you back in. One of the more out there moments comes with the song Spaced Cowboy. A stuttering accented bass line sits atop a robotic beat in what can only be described as a psychedelic country funk anthem. Stone can be heard yodeling 
The rhythm changes at some point, becoming more frenetic and jumpy. An impressive feat for a song built upon a programmed rhythm. My personal favorite of the album is Running Away. It's another return to simpler, more structured songwriting. This time Stone is almost inaudible, with the female vocals taking center stage. The guitars are irresistibly funky and the horns are tasty, becoming even more so in the later half. It's the shortest song on the album, technically. Only the title track is shorter. The thing though, the title track, There's a Riot Going On, is four seconds long and it's entirely silent. Because why the fuck not, right? The album ends with what is essentially a remix of sorts. It's based on the Sly and the Family Stone song, Thank You For Letting Me Be Myself Again, which was released just a year prior. The original single is an upbeat, thumpy romp about gangs and dancing. The album version is a lumbering, slow, stripped down jam that reworks many of the original's lyrics. Sort of like Stone slowed and reverbed one of his own songs. It's a fittingly psychedelic end to the album. Riot is a mess. A druggy, trippy mess of funk and soul. It's the last good thing Sly Stone would ever release. It's the only Family Stone album I consistently go back to. A sort of death knell for the party hardy psychedelic soul of the late 60s and early 70s. Marvin Gaye looked at a world in crisis and wrote music about loving one another and honoring God. Good music, mind you. On the other end of the spectrum, Sly Stone saw the same thing and gave us this. This dusty, dark claustrophobic strung out and heady trip into the psyche of a man on the edge of self-destruction. I respect Marvin Gaye, but he got owned. He asked the world what the fuck was happening and he got an answer. Perhaps not the most coherent answer, but at least it was real. And at least it rocked.